Hi everyone, welcome to the Corgi Q&A for the second year in a row. Um, I'm David Mather, Corgi um, brand executive, and um, I'm also here with Michael Clegg, um, both sporting incredibly fetching headgear. Um, yes. We didn't manage last year, I only had a paper hat on last year, didn't I? But Because um, we've literally come from our staff Christmas dinner, but we've been, you know, the budget's gone up a bit this time, so we've even got a tree behind me. I don't think I had anything last year, so this is definitely definitely a step up for me. I don't know yeah. about a step up. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll let the viewers be the judge of that. I mean, I'm slightly concerned where the other end of Santa Claus is emerging from, Michael. Yeah, I know. He might come out the bottom of there, but we'll, we'll yeah. see. It's, <laughs> it's definitely the closest I've ever been to Santa, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we, sort of, a couple of weeks ago, as part of the Corgi Advent calendar, we asked um, everyone to write in if they had any pressing questions for us, um, as we did last year. Um, we've had quite a really good response. Um, we'll see how long this video indeed lasts. I've got no idea how long it's going to take, because we might sort of wax lyrical, as is the way. I know Michael always does, don't you, mate? I try to, but uh, I was thinking that maybe a, a tin hat would be a better um, headgear than this, but uh, <laughs> let's, go, let's go for it. No, so, I mean, we've sort of... I've restructured the questions out of the order they emerged in, um, so we can give you a nice sort of like a soft intro, Michael, with some aviation, and then we'll sort of go into vanguards and omnibus and then back to aviation um, is the view that I've taken on it. You've not given me any things that I shouldn't say, so I'll, I'll try no. and keep away from business sensitive um, uh, information no, no. and divulging too much about next year's range. But, no, that, um, that's it. I mean, sort of, if anyone does it, it'll be me, and then you can say it's my fault because technically I'm in charge of it, so it's fine. It'll be all right. You don't we'll need to be young. worried. I won't tell we'll you off. Young. We'll get young Dan to edit that bit out then. Yeah, no, no, I, he will. He definitely will. Right then. Okay, so from the top then, um, we had a question from Andy Crisp asking if we had any plans for doing Merlin helicopters, i.e. the Naval and Royal Marine Troop variants. Ideally Crow's Nest version, early warning aircraft version as well. Also, any plans for seeking early warning variant, all in one seventy second scale? Uh, well, we've got our um, our uh, rotary expert who'll be screaming at the screen now. Yes, please. Yes, please. And um, you know, we would like to have them in there. It, this, the, the difficulty that we do have is the fact that there'll be a long list when it comes to capex suggestion time. There'll be a long list of potentials, and um, they work their way up and down during the discussions. And it's just the mm. fact that there are you know budgetary constraints. We we can only do so much. And, and not only that, it's about capacity as well, getting the things done. So. Um, there's a pecking order, and obviously, um, the I suppose the the final say would be with the the the, the man who um, this time of year it'd probably be uh, Ebenezer Scrooge with his uh, with his purse <laughs> strings, whether he opens them or not, and they're the guys who actually, you know, allow us to proceed with things. So, it, it they're on the list. We do like our helicopters; they're always very popular for mm -hmm. us. Certainly, um, Sea Kings. Um, Chinooks are, are very very popular, and um, you know we would like to put one in there, but there's a, an awful lot of other stuff that's in the in the mix as well. Um, I don't know what your view on that subject is. I mean, it's 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 on the list, but how high up the list it is, you know, I'm not so yeah, sure. That's it. I mean, there is an added level of complexity when it comes to Merlin, anyway, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Uh, it, it's a nice it's a nice big big tool, and um, I don't think that we could get. To, we'd have to pick a, a specific version. I don't think there's an awful lot that we could get out of mm. um, out of just doing one tool uh, without it. Being a mess that's always a, a big issue if you put if you put too much um variation in there then you can end up with you know unsightly joint lines and, and it's it's more of a hybrid that we, we try and keep away from that whenever mm -hmm. we can so so yes it, it would be a challenge it's not beyond the realms of fantasy um mm. and it's certainly something that would get um consideration in the future no that's it no um next one from andy b um I would like to ask if an MTO scheme with the new Bowfoot tooling is going to be released in the near future, or any other MTO schemed aircraft in 172nd diecast during 2023, and if so, what? Well, we can't oh, say what. Yeah, I'm not, not sure about the, the last bit, but the first bit, we, can we just say yes and yes? I mean, yes, it's... Um, yes, a yes and yes, yes. No, I mean, I, I have one upstairs which we can't talk about just yet and won't be in our January announcement, um, but that's on my desk upstairs, which is a lovely one. And it looks absolutely fantastic as well. So, yeah, I mean, we, we, we are conscious of the fact that the range is, I mean, it's it, it's it's combative now. It's um, if you will, it's it's a little a little smaller, but it's a you know, it's it's full of of crackers really. That was a that was a bit of a Christmas um, a Christmas word to use, wasn't it? But um, mm. but yeah, and and we we have these things lined up. We always try and do things that we 
that we know people are looking for and um, you know that's one that we know will be popular so mm. i think i think um, andy's going to be quite happy with uh, what yeah. he sees in the very near future yeah that's it um elliot walker has asked um when will we see blackjack eurofighter and when will your next hawker hunter release be and will it be 148 well, I mean, I think I better take the blackjack first um, to manage expectation. There won't be blackjack in 2023. Um, that's purely a capacity issue, um, thanks to the production sort of delays that have impacted since COVID with the Eurofighter tooling. Um, it is on the list. Um, there is a second one due to be announced at some point next year, um, but it's not blackjack, um, purely because of the long lead time we've had since it was announced and ultimately it's also down to why we've gone and changed how we announce our product for Corgi um, so that we will be able to be a bit more nimble in future. The problem is this has been so long running and been with our vendors for such a long time it is what it is and it can't be changed. Yeah and, and this, the, this the thing that um, obviously it's taken a while because we want it to be right we, it's it's an incredibly difficult um, aircraft to replicate in diecast, especially in 148 scale. And we have had some challenges, but we think we've um, we've negotiated those challenges. It's absolutely beautiful. It really is. But then, if, uh, of course, we've always got that um, trade off between special schemes and uh, operational schemes. And we have, you know, our our, um, our experts and, and discussions within the team. Um, and you'll have. Um, you'll, you'll have one that favour one above the other. other. So um, we, we have to share that about. Blackjack is doing a great job for RAF recruitment. There's no two ways about it. And probably is one of the most um, popular aircraft on the on the airshow circuit. So it, it's a big call. But because we decided to go, I mean, it, this project's been in gestation for quite a while, but because mm. we decided to go with the, um, with the Battle of Britain anniversary scheme for the first one, I mean, I don't think we would ever do two, you know, really strong anniversary schemes one after the other. But Blackjack is an icon. It will certainly come, and I'll tell you something, it's going to look absolutely fantastic on our tools. Yeah, no, I, I want one. I'm, I'm having that on the sideboard. I don't care what the wife says. Yeah, well, you, you're the man that can press the button. You could you could move it up the order if you wanted, but uh, we, won't, we won't say that. That that bit might have to be edited. But um, Yeah, no, I just realised my darling wife might watch this video, so I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Amy. Of course, I will negotiate it very carefully with you if it sits on the sideboard. Yes, well, you, you can uh, you, you can put it down as your uh, as your Christmas box from work, can't you? Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> um, and Hawker Hunter. Well, I mean, um, there's no plans for it in one seventy second um, at the moment. Um, I mean, it is on the list, as we've said already about the list. There is, it is sitting there on a potential list for one forty eighth. Obviously, um, beautiful, beautiful aircraft, and we very much yeah. want to do it. Um, it's all about positioning from our point of view. Yeah. The one, the one seventy second scale tooling is is lovely, and it's a beautiful aeroplane. It's just the fact that we haven't done one for a while, and you know, obviously, um, from an economic perspective, you know, everything's gone up. Everybody knows that you know we we do face challenges with that. So right. it'd be quite an, an expensive addition to the range compared to the last time it was released. Um, yeah. But um, it is an iconic ship. It would look awesome in 148 scale and i know i keep badgering you about um about potentially putting it in there so um so it does get discussed so um you know it, it all is not lost and, and you know the difficulty is we've got to manage the, the the existing tools as well and 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 sometimes that can be quite a challenge because we have to run full um full tooling checks before we can even see whether whether there's all the parts are there whether you know whether it's a, a viable alternative for future ranges and we do try and inc include include some of the um some of the uh, you know long forgotten tools every now and then um but hunter's not it's not immediately in the plans but it's certainly been discussed uh, for, for 148 scale so yeah, um nice. again d definitely don't give up hope no so, so that's a, a first little taster a starter if you will of your christmas dinner for some aviation michael i'm going to take us on to some vanguards next now um as a bit more of the main course but don't worry you'll, you'll have like the full cheese board later on with with aviation so there's I can stick my nose into Vanguard as well. Yeah, no, no. And so, I mean, um, first one we had um, was from Mike Graham. Now, I, I had to go away and actually ask our development manager about this one because it's a very specific question and a very good question. In the pre-release CAD drawings for your Ford Escort Mark IV, you showed an option for five-door cars. All the releases so far have been three-door versions. Are we likely to see five-door models in the future, or did the option not proceed to production? So this one required a bit of detective work on my part. Um, so the simple answer is yes, there was no sort of movement on... Um, oh, I can see your cat, Michael. Can you? Yeah. There you go. Oh. Having a stretch. They're going to attack you in a minute. Uh, yeah, often often is the time, d dear viewers, when I sort of am on a phone call with Michael and he suddenly starts swearing at a feline because he's being attacked by it. 
out of the blue. So well, you never know what's going to happen in our videos. So you have to keep watch what's going on there. Everyone's distracted. I'm not going to listen to what we're saying. It does like to make an appearance, and it would certainly be interested by my headgear. So uh, you know, watch this space. Okay, so um, yeah, we've completely gone off off track there with uh, Mike's question about um, the five door version of the Escort Mark IV. The simple answer is um, it's not not been told. So no, um, it was done at a CAD level from what we can see. There was no sign off for the CAD. Um, so we have no record of it. So at this stage, no, um, it did not proceed to production. Doesn't mean, of course, it won't be revisited at some point in the future, of course, um, as we, we will often be saying that, I think, <laughs> in the video. But um, at this stage, no, that it won't be appearing as an immediate thing because it simply doesn't exist at the moment. Um, okay, next one from Andy Glenn. Um, Firstly, congratulations on the Mark V Cortina. Thank you very much, Andy. I know I've been vocal on Facebook complaining about the wheel tire on your models, but honestly, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. Just make sure you do some South African XR6 versions. We'll be looking at that. Well, I have many questions, but firstly, why not do a 007 Spy Who Loved Me twin pack with the Esprit and a black Taurus? You have the castings and even a left-hand drive dashboard for the Taurus. It's a no-brainer. As for other models, I know you have to make what it will sell as in variations of castings. But there's lots of non forwards you could do, Vauxhall, Victor, FD, and FE, for example. So, yeah, no. So, thank you, as I say, on the Cortina. We're, we're very pleased with it. Um, it's going to be a tool which we see quite a lot of life out of in the future. I know there's been quite a lot of requests for other colours. Um, they will be coming, obviously. Um, on the 007 stuff, now, it's, you know, it is true we'd have the castings. I mean, with the Esprit and the Taurus, um, they're in 143rd scale. Um, the issue that we've got is through like a, a business practice point of view in effect that our license extends to a certain scales when it comes to our entertainment licenses so we couldn't actually produce those cars um, in our bond packaging because they're not the same size as our other bond products um, so obviously we've got the esprit and the submarine version and the um, the later on the orange version as well with the skis on the roof which are currently in the range um, so one of the things I have been looking at is whether we tool up the white version um, in a new version in the future, or um, we do it with, you know, just as a road going version of it. I mean, that's a, that's a pure hypothetical, no guarantees on that. I mean, the Taurus itself would be, you know, thus sort of counted out, unfortunately. But I mean, we are sort of looking at things and we'll sort of come to that a bit later on in some of these Vanguard's questions about entertainment licenses for things um, and where we go with it. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, it's it's potentially not such a strong option for us because of just pure vega is a business practice, which is annoying sometimes. But that's that's all, all we can say really on that. Um, yeah, th th those those are the sort of boring answers that that they'll be expecting. Mm. But I mean, it's it's true. I mean, there, there's so many different uh, facets to a, a model making it into the range, and you know, licensing is a big issue. Capacity is mm. a big issue. There's loads of things that have to be satisfied before they can get it in. Then it's not just a case of you know because we've got something in the tooling bank that we can actually use it. So yeah. you know, when people don't see things and they get frustrated, it's not it's not necessarily because we're just overlooking things. It's because there are other, you know, um, considerations that, that stop it from yeah. happening at that particular time. Yeah, no, and it's certainly not because we're ignoring anyone either. I mean, sort of, we are sort of about on the internet in stealth at times, aren't we? So we sort of, we're, we're aware of things that are going on, let's say. <laughs> yeah, and, and at the end of the day, I mean, people have to, you know, they, they, they must understand that, that we want to produce the models that people want to buy. I mean, we, we, we're all into doing that. So we, when we put a range together, it's not because it's a range that, that, that you know, that we want to do just from a, you know, a selfish perspective. It's definitely something that we, that we hope people are, are going to want to add to the collections. Yeah, no, that's it. Um, Tim Pullen asks, have you considered producing estate coupe convertible versions of the Vanguard's range? Most of the work is already done in a saloon. I'm sure Granada. Sorry, I'm sure for Granada two estates are popular. Though EXO seems to have got there first, and yes, they have. And sort of just to sort of quickly jump in on that, we were planning to do one, but because they have, we can't now. Um, Granada Mark One Coupe is only covered in neo and expensive plastic. Um, so, and then sort of other options that he lists. I mean, yes, absolutely. Um, in effect, each go round with those would be a new tool. Um, from our point of view, we've what would be reused would be the wheelbase um, in the tooling. And then it's sort of a question of adding in um, extra parts or, in effect, with certain things, um, retooling the entire thing from scratch. So it does sort of become a, you know, a full bore sort of capex project from our point of view to do them. Um, you know, we're looking at making sure that they're integrated into some versions, like our Triumph TR6, for example, as hard and soft tops in the tool. 
Um, so, you know, we, you will see a hard top TR6 very soon. Um, some of the older ones, as I say, fall into this bracket. So it's, it's very much something which we would want to look at um, in the future for sure. Yeah, I mean, it, obviously, I'm going to try and equate that back to to aviation and stuff. But, but when you're putting these things to people, I mean, sometimes we're not the people that actually get to to make the final say. And um, you know, if there's a, a certain type that's that's stuck in the warehouse and there's lots of them left, I mean, people are you know look look at that and think that it's not quite as um, as, as interesting a, an option. And you know, if you were going to them with something like let's say a Spitfire, which we we have just done, and maybe a, a, a Mackie Veltra or something like that that we'd love to have in the range. I mean, they won't have heard of that and they probably think the Spitfire's a, a better commercial decision. So, you know, yeah. there are all sorts of um, questions that come to play before we can make these uh, these decisions. But um, we're always on the look and we do, we, you know, we do take notice of what people are saying. Mm, no, that's it. I mean, um, it's always, everything's always under consideration from our point of view. So it's, um, we, we never stop doing that. Um, I've realised that my printout is actually missing some of the questions, which is a bit annoying. So we'll have to figure out how we, we tackled those. I have them on my desktop here, so I'll be able to go to that. Um, there's a couple of questions here which are sort of linked on Vanguard's. Um, one from Josh Wood and a, a series of questions from Roland Hill. Um, and there's a bit of crossover with both. So I sort of thought that maybe the best way to deal with them and answer them properly is to sort of take them at the same time. Uh, so Josh, for example, has asked, what are your plans for the Vanguard's range moving forwards? i.e. which vehicle makes and eras are likely to be featured. With regards to this, would you consider modelling a variety of British cars from the 80s, 90s and 2000s, such as, such as Austin, MG, Rover, including Mini, Jaguar, Land Rover, Vauxhall, etc. Many of these cars are sadly lacking in scale model form. And so Roland sort of asked very similarly, and I'll, I'll address yours properly, Roland, as well, um, when I come to it, but the, your first question is sort of tied into this as well, um, in effect that you've asked about the mission of the range um, of 143rd scale Corgi Vanguards. If it's no longer focused on motoring heritage, then what? Then what? What is its mission statement in effect? Um, is the range now entirely focused on the UK market, as there seem to be very few models with a wider global appeal? Um, and the future of the Vanguards brand as all new casting since 2020 no longer carry it on the base. Um, so I'll sort of address these in terms because they're both sort of linked in effect. Um, what is the mission statement of Corgi Vanguards? Um, and I sort of couldn't understand because we've got other questions as well about people saying about there's a focus on Ford at the moment, no pun intended, because we're doing a Ford focus. Um, but there is like, we're, we're driving at Ford, I'm doing another pun. We, 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 you know, we're, we're doing... <laughs> You've got them all lined up, haven't you? There's hundreds just, of them to just come. It's filling out of me um, when I'm trying to make a serious point. What can I say? Um, so, Vanguards. Um, yes, we're sort of at the moment, Ford, they sell very well, is a simple fact of the matter. Um, it can be frustrating, it's understandably frustrating. It's something I'm looking to address when we come to 2024 onwards um, with our CapEx items and new things. There will be sort of things which are not Fords going into the range as new tools in 2024, not 2023, um, because of you know, various business decisions that have been taken. Um, but the simple fact of the matter is they're extremely popular. Um, with the Ford Focus, for example, it's a modern car. Now, ostensibly, this is not the initial original mission statement for vanguards. They you know from cars from the 50s, then 60s, 70s, and it's bled onwards into the 80s and 90s. And something like the Focus is a very, very modern car. But, you know, the, the, is it a vanguard? The point is, it's no longer produced. Um, and at the same time, at what point does it become a vanguard? So that's a consideration. Another consideration which I'm sort of thinking very closely of, and this ties to what is the mission, what is the future of the range for vanguards, um, and not to sort of be negative towards environmentalism and electric vehicles and things, but there's something to be said for what will be, by the end of this decade, the decline of the combustion engine vehicle. Um, you know, they will not be produced anymore. And so at that point, is it that every combustion engine vehicle ever produced, maybe not hypercars or things like that, but do they sort of then fall under the Vanguard's category because in effect they are the bastion of things which are no longer being produced in the wider world. Um, so that is a, a major consideration and the reason why sort of more modern vehicles have gone into the range is ultimately is recruitment. Um, we are looking to recruit new collectors to our range. Now that's not going to say that the vehicles which I've just sort of said we'll be making in the future are going to be modern cars from other manufacturers. They are not. 
you know, um, we're talking about vehicles from the 70s, 80s, and maybe early 90s in that case, nothing 2000s. Um, it's all very much about recruitment, getting new collectors, and something with the focus, for example, um, we have seen, you know, it's going to be sold out by the time that Focus RS arrives. It will be a sellout. We will not be able to sell it from the website based on everything I'm seeing. Um, we've, we've had, the number of times we've had to up the stock for it and we can only go so far until we produce it. Um, it's very much sort of looking like it's going to be a great success for us. Now, it's not going to be the principal driver of that sub-brand at all. I can assure you of that. Um, there are going to be, obviously, the next year to manage expectations, there will be a Ford waiting again, but there are also going to be additions of cars and vehicles from other manufacturers that have not been produced for a very, very long time in some cases. Um, we have to sort of be mindful of the different manufacturers because, as I say, Ford sells. It's as simple as that. Um, when we look at Vauxhall, I'd love to do a new tool for Vauxhall, um, but at the same time, I've had a Vauxhall, uh, was it a Cavalier? in the range for five years and we've sold it through this year. It came out in 2018 and we finally sold it through. Um, and it was, you know, a thousand odd units. Now, a Ford is just in and out and it's gone um, like that. And it's like, why is that? You know, we, we don't, other than the data, we've got no real reason for it other than the fact that Ford fans are buying them. So it is sort of a question of make it and they will come, obviously. And that's what we're going to be looking at in the future. But as I, as I say, my point of view is the mission of Corgi Vanguards and the plans for Vanguards is it's not going to be part of the course that we're doing modern cars. You know, there will be still that mix. There, there, there's no way. I mean, I've seen sort of chatter because, Roland, I know you're in um, one of the um, groups on Facebook. I'm also a member of that lurking around on there. Um, and so I sort of seen like, commentary on there saying that we'll never be producing cars again from like the 70s or something. That's simply not true. We will be. Um, so, you know, it's ongoing like that but it's very much don't be sort of disheartened and say oh it's all going to be modern Fords from now on it's not simple as that there will be stuff coming in the future um, from other manufacturers with a different appeal and different things and things we've never done before as well um, so we're talk looking to talk to manufacturers we've never produced models with ever so oh you know, you're trying to reorientate yourself to avoid the cat yeah, little devil it's deciding to mess about that you, you have definitely got a future in politics that was that was like um that, that was like a, a little scene from uh you know question time or something that, that was excellent well, let well, me the, give you let me give you a little ripple for that the, the difference with politics though michael is i'm trying to tell the truth oh good one we, we hey, shouldn't let, say things like that let's hope um itv this don't see water, that but, <laughs> i mean roland's not terps or something Roland's <laughs> question was, it, it, it was so detailed that, I mean, I almost felt like I was in a development meeting looking at that. It's, um, Giving you a you run know, for your money, am I? Yeah, it was, it was really, really, but, you know, that was, it was a good answer. And, I mean, again, with that, it's um, you, you know, all things are up for play and, uh, you know, yeah. don't don't write anything out. It's it, we, we always discuss these things. Sometimes, you know, it might seem as if we we, we just concentrate on one area, but we certainly don't. And mm, um, That's it. It's, um, um, so, there are lots of lots of reasons why why certain things make it into the range and others don't yeah so i mean i hope that sort of answers your side of the question josh i mean so roland you've got some more bits on yours um so i've done the mission of the range um is the range now entirely focused on the uk market not necessarily i mean our new tools which are obviously as i say modern vehicles they are left and right hand drive so we have the option to do so um it is ultimately about where we sell our product into and so if we sort of see success with certain vehicles going into different markets, then we will obviously go there as well. Um, the future of the Vanguard's brand has all new casting since 2020, no longer carry it on the base. They just say Corgi. So Vanguard isn't going anywhere. Um, that is purely a flexibility decision on our point of view. Um, the reason it just says Corgi means that we can put these vehicles into other ranges. So you've seen it already, for example, with the uh, Volkswagen camper vans that are in our Coca-Cola range. Um, the new tools of those that just say Corgi on the bottom and not just Vanguard, so it means we can actually sell a high detail product, which is a Vanguard's tooling, but in a more sort of general marketplace to a different audience. So there's no ulterior motive with that whatsoever. It's simply a question of product um, deliverability and flexibility on our point of view. Um, the role of TV and film related vehicles, which I believe has massive potential. Um, so, I mean, that sort of goes back to Andy's question earlier on as well. I mean, 
Um, I was just watching um, some stuff last night and looking up vehicles that appear in that, and unfortunately we've got the tooling for that. Made a note, go and sort of think about that in the future. It's not a Ford, so that helps. Um, but you know, yes, absolutely. I mean, um, we have our screen stars range now as well. Um, so that's something which we're looking to expand. So the, in effect, the car becomes the star rather than the license, if you know what you, if you know, you know. But that's something which, again, will be looked at in the future. Um, and lastly, Roland, you've asked any potential developments with 143rd Oxford diecast models, which are now in the same business group stable. Um, so Oxford remains a separate part of the business from Corgi. Um, it will continue to operate independently from Corgi. Um, I have been told that there is the option for us to maybe do some swapping about and interoperability. Inter That's a long word for only a slope of water. Uh, it's um, definitely not water. It's definitely not water, you think? No, I'm looking a bit red, aren't I? But it's all the studio lights. But um, no, so um, they're, they're, we're going to be separate still, is, is the view as I understand it. But I mean, there is the potential for interaction between us as well. So um, that's a watch this space. Um, so yeah, um, David Lynn sort of, I've sort of gone quite a bit through some of the Ford stuff, but um, more a plea than a question, more a quest plea than a question. Please rediscover the spirit of adventure and imagination which underpinned Vanguards from its origins 20 plus years ago and stop feeding your Ford fetish to the exclusion of almost anything else. Um, I know your Ford splurges consistently sell well, but if you keep playing it safe, you'll lose the rest of us. There's loads of untraveled 70s, 80s, 90s directions you could explore to keep us all within your loyal following. Um, give Fords a rest now. Um, now, I mean, hopefully I've sort of said and addressed this as well already. Um, there's obviously business considerations for Ford. They sell very well. Um, simple as that. Um, but yes, it's my intent to be going in those 70s, 80s, 90s directions with other manufacturers as we move forward um, and embracing other things. So, sorry, the this, this sort of collective um, considerations as well, because I mean, the, with these having, you know, really strong market penetration, hopefully that means that... Um, people who haven't experienced the, the Vanguard's range before are actually coming into contact with them. And then that makes them look at, at other, other stuff that we've got in the range. And, and again, mm -hmm. that could potentially breathe new life into some of the existing toolings and, and, and potential future ones as well. So, yeah. you know, there is that aspect to look at as well. So yeah. they, they are doing a great job for us with regards to, you know, putting them in the hands of, um, of future collectors, should we say. Yeah, no, that's it. Um... So I'm going to find the other page of questions before we go too much further forward because we're now sort of moving into van. Uh, have we done vanguards? We're moving into omnibus. Um, so I'll open this up. Have it in front of me when we get there. There we go. Right, I'm ready for the next bit. But let me let me see your lovely face again, Michael. I've lost you. There we go. Right. Okay. So you can omnibus. live without that. Um. Hi, this is from John Robinson. Um, hi, do you have any plans to produce more non-London right Gemini buses and um, Satano Levant, I um, always get that pronunciation wrong, um, as sort of Dan might know, and there might be a reason for that. Um, Sianto Levant coaches, as these models now sell for well above their original RRP on the second-hand market. Um, the answer to that, John, is yes to both. Um, I can go one further for you and say that there aren't actually any new route masters, um, new bus for Londons in the range next year at all, um, so it's a spoiler in effect, but we're not releasing any at all. Um, it's all going to be other stuff, but um, yes, the both of those, that's a very much a watch this space and hopefully you'll be pleased with one of those um, when I do the January announcement. You nearly let your cat out the bag then. I did, there's a bit of a slip there, wasn't there, but it's all right, um, we're not gonna edit it. I'm happy to let that one go because it's all about Christmas. So I, I like that. try and do my best to make people happy at the moment. Um, so Michael Windle and Paul Jarmy um, have both asked the same question, in effect. Hi, Corgi, are there any new original omnibus castings in 2023? And hi, are we ever going to get any new buses? The um, answer to that, once again, is yes. And I'll have more to talk about that in January. That's a short answer, but yeah, there's more to say on that. And now, Michael, it's back to Aviation Archive. So um, I hope you're, hope you're ready. Thank you. Nice, yeah. right yeah. smile, because right. this is a bit of a biggie, isn't it? It is, but I mean, I, I'm not sure you're going to like the opening question um, from James Foster, but it is a question that is definitely worth addressing. Um, Given the high price of Corgi Aviation, I was wondering why Corgi allows so many errors to slip through, but also don't use the knowledge of the fan base. Hmm. Right. Well, I mean, obviously, we don't let errors slip through. Errors occur because they, they're human errors. Um, and um, and it's very frustrating when this happens because 
this, despite our best efforts, um, things can go wrong, and it, and it's it's always new things that you've um, that, that you've not considered in the past, and, and we've all got you know twenty years plus experience in doing this at the moment, and you know the mm-hmm. truth of the matter is the odd time something something just t- does turn up. Now there's loads of reasons for that, and, and and you know and you can't go into all of them, and everybody might think that they're excuses, and they probably come across as, as, as sounding just like that, but you have um, changes in personnel. You certainly have changes in factories. I mean, logistically, if you think about when um, Corgi came under the, the, um, the, the Hornby banner, um, there were any number of factories that were, that were vying for this business and they all wanted to, you know, to knock spots off each other to produce our products. That just simply isn't the case now. So, you know, you restrict to a, a small number of, of factories and and also the 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 expertise within those factories has, has, has all moved off. I mean, they're not making die cast models anymore. These people are making, you know, tablets and electronic stuff. And, you know, that, that that's the one of the main reasons. So when you have, you know, one change in personality with um, within that little network that you've got, it can sometimes have, have impacts. And, and it's down to... I mean, I don't mean any disrespect by, by, by this at all, but, but but it can be down to interpretation. When we have our mm-hmm. experts, which, you know, we've got a really robust um, team of experts that we use who, you know, uh, I don't think can be better. They're absolutely fantastic, and I trust them implicitly. And when they give us very detailed feedback on, on uh, production models, pre-production models, and we send those back, sometimes what we put in the report can just simply be, um, misinterpreted and, mm-hmm. and, and and it causes an issue um and there are there are other things that happen i mean people wouldn't expect me to 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 um to give business decisions on on particular models but certainly every time an issue occurs we make sure that we learn from it we make sure that that doesn't happen again and if mm-hmm. it, if, if if something related to it does happen again there's a there's a reason for that but um mm-hmm. you know and it, and it is down to a multitude of reasons it's not because we don't care it's certainly not because we don't put enough uh, time and attention into these things nothing could be further from the truth we you know we we, we think that we've got this pretty much nailed um yeah. but the, the truth of the matter is um human errors creep in mistakes will happen we try and minimize that wherever we can we don't want any mistakes ever and it really yeah. does upset us when they come it, through it, so, it, so. it is sort of more frustrating than anything when we sort of find that there is an error and i mean we often do try and move heaven and earth to rectify it, and we find that simply there is nothing we can do about it, which is, again, extremely frustrating for everyone that works on Corby um, when it comes to it. Um, and all the only thing we can take away from it is a, is a learning experience that we, we will strive to improve as we go on to the next one. Yeah, and the truth of the matter, I mean, sometimes we even have to second guess potential problems. So we we try and uh, look at, at things and address things before they're actually a problem, just to make sure that we're mitigating the potential for such a thing. So mm. um, we don't take it lightly. When it happens, um, we're absolutely devastated because you know mm. we love this brand and we certainly love you know from my perspective, I love the the airplanes that we that we bring to market and put together. And it's a you know it's a, a bitter pill to swallow when these things happen, but we strive really hard to make sure that it never happens again. Mm. And, um, you know, um, we, we're con- continually improving. You know, we don't take anything for granted. And, you know, we'll, we'll keep trying to make sure that, that nothing like this ever happens again. Yeah. I, can't say, I can't say it won't, um, mm. but, you know, we'll do our utmost to make sure it doesn't. So yeah. I hope that, I hope that uh, placates James a little bit. Yeah, no, that's it. Um... Paul Manning asks, um, some suggestions for your Q&A and future releases. Any chance of a one... I'll probably split this one up, actually. Any chance of a 172nd GM4 Betty, Lockheed Hudson Stroke Ventura, or a Hamden? Now, I guess the the answer to that is yes. I mean, sort of, there there is like a deferring degrees of complexity with all of them, isn't there? I mean, um, Hudson is the easiest to achieve from our point of view. Um, Hamden um, is, you know, it places very high on collector polls, you know, we're asked an awful lot about it. I mean, it's definitely worth addressing the Hamden. I think it comes up later on in the questions as well. So we might as well strike with it here. Um, It's not going to be the easiest of models to produce, is it, the Hamden? Um, No, it's not. Um, It's it's 100% aviation archive territory. It's it's one that we know will be 
incredibly popular. We know it's been requested many, many times. It always appears on our on our CAPEX proposal documents when we're talking about these things. Um, but from our perspective, it would have to be accurate. It would have to be, um, you know, a, a, a fantastic representation of that aeroplane. And, you know, and getting that information is proving a little bit difficult you know it's mm. i mean that suggests that we have looked at it and you know people would expect us to have done just that it, it, it'll happen there's no no two ways about it that will come at some point in the future when that when that is we don't know but there's a lot of um boxes mm. that need to be ticked before that can happen yeah. um and, and, and with all of these again you know it comes back to that question of um when when we have our meetings and we we we, we give our proposals as to what we think should be in the next range and subsequent ranges, because we look very much into the future when we're talking about these things with, with, with planning stuff. And, um, and they're all on there. They all, they all vie. It's like, it's like looking at, you know, stocks and shares. They all, they all up at the top and then they move down again. And, and at any particular snapshot in time, um, one will appear higher than the other and, yeah. uh, you know, and, and that could get done. Um, but they definitely, always considered i mean they're all fantastic additions to the range they would all look great they're all that size as well that that always does well for us you know twin engine mm. aircraft of a certain stature you know a, a certain um girth should we say they'd all look absolutely great in die cast and um mm. you know we, we'd we'd love to have them so you know they do get discussed mm. there is every possibility that they will get to, done at some stage am i am i going on a bit no 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 you're not i mean it's sort of it's probably worth sort of saying that especially with Hamden for example it's been on my list since you know I started doing this job nearly two years ago it's at the top of my list but because of the reasons which we're sort of saying it's like it's worth managing expectation that it won't be appearing as an announcement in 23 it won't be appearing as an announcement in 24 even at this stage um, maybe after that but purely because of the amount of work behind the scenes that will, will be needed to make sure we deliver a completely accurate model um, and that means working with people outside of the business to achieve it. Yeah, and when it comes, it'll be it'll be fantastic. But you know, yeah. we're aware. We did a, a few years ago. We we, we gave um, collectors the opportunity to suggest which models they'd love to see in the range, and that was you know far and away at the top. So we yeah. know you guys. Uh, we know you want, want it. it. We um, want it too. It's yeah, just, we're, we're, yeah. When we're when we're in a position to deliver it, we we certainly will do. But yeah. it's got it's got to be you know up to the standard that you guys would expect and we would expect as well. So and what about watch the this space. What about the Betty? Is there sort of a survivor anywhere that we could maybe go and have a look at? I th I think that there is. I mean, it's it, it it's a it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because I mean, if you if you were coming to me and saying, right, Clegg, if you um if we do that, your mortgage is on the line. I mean, that, that it's a difficult one. And um, you know, w when there's um potentially um, two new toolings that you could put into any one range and, and, and the bet is one of them. I mean, I'd love to have, it. it's a really important aircraft. It's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's um, there's so many really good schemes that we could do that have got historic um, significance. Um, mm. And it, and it's got that girth. It's a big round fuselage. It's, you know, it's a, it, it's a lovely Steady looking on, thing. On. Yeah. But sorry, but, um, but you know, it, there are others. I mean, if somebody said, "Would you, would you want a Betty or would you want a Hudson?" I'd probably say Hudson, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But you know, so so the, all those um, those questions are always going to be in there. And there's always going to be a you know, it's going to be like a tennis match, bat, batting the ball to and fro. But you know, commercial decisions will usually um, dictate which one actually ends up yeah. at the top of that list. So it will be discussed. It's not beyond the realms of fantasy that that it will happen. But at this moment in time, I would think that there would be other uh, stronger options, if mm. I'm being honest. Um, Paul also asked the second part of his question, and would also be awesome to see a 172nd Corsair and Catalina in RNZAF livery, or the P40 wire wrapper Wildcat. I mean, Corsair and Catalina, yes. I mean, Corsair's been discussed amongst us again, isn't it? So, um, yeah. and Catalina, because it's been a long time since Catalina came out. So, yeah, no, stuff's on the table there, definitely, Paul, um, as and when, um, in the future, uh, is the best we, place to say. We, we, we always get strong support from, uh, you know, from collectors in that part of the world yeah. as well. So we are aware of that. We, we, we certainly always, uh, when we put in our ranges together, you know, obviously we, we, we've got the toolings nailed. It's down to schemes then and which, uh, which actual um, aircraft we want to put yeah. in there. And, and they do regularly get discussed. And that is definitely... Uh, on the cards. That's it. So, I mean, I've, I've run out of my printouts now, so I'm going to have to sort of drag you over to the side of my monitor, Michael, so I can still see you, okay. and then I will be opening them in words. So, um, 
Yes, all, all sort of on this side of the screen. Um, everyone can get an advanced look at it. Um, this one from Colin Palmer. Hello and Merry Christmas to all at Colgy. Hi, Merry Christmas to you too, Colin. I have two questions. I'll tackle them separately. Um, Colgy have won the Best Model of the Year award on the Model Hangar 3 forum for the past three years. Your new toolings have been top notch. Is there any possibility of a B29 Super Fortress, Fokker Wolf 200 Condor, or SM79 Sparrowhawk in the future, or would they literally be too big in terms of commitment and cost? Now, that's a, it, it, that's a good one because he's almost answered his own question there. Um, all yeah. three have been discussed. All three yeah. we would love to introduce into the range. The B29 has been on the list for an awful long time, and we have um, concepted that uh, uh, even as far as you know getting costs for tooling. It, it when we did that, it was just physically not possible to produce mm. it in a manner that our collectors would expect because mm. you know one thing that you have to consider when you're doing these things is that you can't introduce unsightly joint lines we, we, certainly people wouldn't expect us to to give them a, a an aviation archive product that needs putting together should we say so you can't have one that, that you have to put the wings on you can't have joint lines where there aren't joint lines on the real aircraft mm. um and logistically a, a b29 would be a bit of a challenge but again, it's definitely um, aviation archive um, fodder. Yeah. It, it should be in there. It, it, we, we hope it'll come at some point in the future. But all three of those have been discussed as you know really viable um, options for future ranges. Yeah, I mean the SM seventy nine, I know, sort of um, was you know quite a, a popular request um, as well. And so I mean that one's an interesting one because it would be a slightly different sort of um, well market for us in some ways, I suppose. Um, so it, again, it's sort of, we're looking at all of them. We have looked at all of them. They're all on our lists. Um, it's, you know, they're actually, in some ways, they're, in terms of the actual development, um, rather than deliverability and cost and things like that, they're actually easier to achieve than something like the Hamden at this stage, um, just in terms of how we go about doing things. But um, yeah, no, I mean, it's not for, they're not getting discounted at this stage. Um, we can say that. I mean, there, there is obviously the cost implication attached to it and, of course, people's wallets at the, in the current yeah. climate. So um, B29, you know, is top of my list for, uh, you know, the next proper heavy Second World War aircraft. And it would be further off in the future when we would ensure that both, you know, the company and, um, you know, people wanting to purchase it would be able to purchase it. Um, but then also probably give you enough time to clear some shelf space for the thing. Because I, I don't know where you'd put it. It'd be, it'd be a cracker. And, um, you know, obviously our American fans would be really keen on that. But, yeah. um, you know, it is a, it, it's, it's definitely one we want to add. I mean, and, and again, from a commercial perspective, it's, it's easy when you're dealing with, um, you know, um, Hornby money, I suppose. But if we had to put our, our own um, yeah. uh, funds behind it, there's a pecking order. And, and something like a, a, an SM79 would be, bit of a risk if the truth be told mm -hmm. i mean if you it's it's putting us out that it might be a, a commercial master stroke there's no choice about because mm. the, the scheme options that you could put on those it's one of the things that only corgi can do as well isn't it yeah. only we yeah. can do that is sort of not no sort of hint of arrogance on it but it's sort of that's the way that corgi works and it is a product which we would be the ones to to actually achieve yeah. um really um colin's uh, uh, sorry they would all they, they would all look great on the on a, on a display shelf as well absolutely. so um, I'm, no, absolutely. I'm getting all excited at the profit you are th th thinking about those now there you go um colin's the second part of his question and um, which will be a quick answer from our point of view secondly a lot of collectors including myself are very keen to complete our world war ii not luftwaffe night fighter theme with an all black bf 109 so is this something that you have discussed as part of your annual which models get made meetings um, the answer is yes, and um, all being well by this time next year, you'll be very happy. I can't believe you just said that. I was trying to keep that inside, but um, you, can, <laughs> you, you can't beat a nice uh, Messerschmitt, and you can't it's Christmas, beat a, Michael. Yeah, you, you can't beat a, a night fighter. So um, there you go. Merry, Merry Christmas, Colin. Merry Christmas, Colin. Um, Justin K asks, um, was was just wondering if we we're going to see an update to the tooling for the Mosquito. I understand that they're all quite similar, but even for the previously released T30, TT-35, there was no bulge Bombay. Additionally, are there any plans for new aircraft yet to be seen in 172nd, like the Fairy Firefly? Um, quickly, Firefly's on the list as well. Um, yeah. Not imminent, but it's on the list. Um, Mosquito, we've talked about mods um, for that one, and it's a question of whether it is a mod or if we actually go to full fat new tool on that in, at some point in the future. 
Yeah, it's a it's a it's a, a perennial winner. The Mosquito. It's a, an aircraft everybody loves. I mean, it's, hopefully we'll get one flying in, in at some point in the future in the UK. Um, it's been really good for us. It, it, it needed last time we introduced it. Well, not the, the time before that. We um, we had an issue with the tooling. We had to we had to initiate some some new tooling because mm. um, you know there was there was a, a problem with the with the existing tooling. Um, the big question is whether we whether we do retool it and in what scale we retool it. But I think that's going to come yeah. up a, a little yeah. later on. So we'll... sort of further down the line, isn't it, on that one? Yeah. Um, Sam Marincelli asks, hello, Michael and David. Assuming it's you two running the show again, my question is aviation archive related. It's almost like Sam's psychic, um, almost like he knew that we were going to be doing this um, together. Um, he probably will be doing this again this time next year as well, Michael. Hopefully. Fingers maybe, crossed. Maybe, you know, maybe, we're, we're, maybe without hat maybe, cat. It's beginning to hurt a bit. I don't know about yours, but I'm, I'm going to soldier on. I'm, I'm not stopping. I'm not taking this thing off because mostly I'm terrified about what my hair's going to look like underneath this thing. So, um, yeah, not, not well, ideal. You, 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 you've still got hair, have you? Have you uh, yeah, no, no. I, I have, well, it's not migrated to my face, but um, no, it's oh. still up there. It's still there. But um, yeah, um, any plans to retool any more existing releases following on the, from the success in this area with 172nd fighters? A reworked Mozzie, might I just mention that, Lancaster or B-17 with all the now available tech would, would each be spectacular in their own right. Completely agree. Um, yeah. I mean, they are sort of long running tools, aren't they? I mean, sort of we're in like the high 20s, um, early 30s on all of them, I think, for the releases. And, so there are things which we could do um, to improve, potentially, or to look yeah. at. Um, but I mean, at the same time, we would like to push forward with things which haven't been done as well. Yeah. And so that's all and part that, of that consideration which we're talking about. Definitely. And I mean, the, the Mosquito's sort of 21 years old now, isn't it, from mm -hmm. a tooling perspective. Um, you, you could say that it's, it's earned its keep and, and, and we, we could look at it. The problem we've got is um, it's all about tooling development um, costs. We could mm -hmm. spend quite a bit of money, you know, modifying, upgrading, retooling the existing uh, models, mm -hmm. which, which all, you know, continue to, to still sell well. I mean, the Lancaster and the B-17 are still magnificent toolings. And so, you know, if we went to the business and said, we want to do a new um, B-17, they'd probably say, well, why? Because the one that you've got still selling well, mm. it's still really nice. I mean, we, we could we could tweak it. That's something that we do discuss, whether we, yeah. you know, whether we, we provide little uh, detail upgrades uh, and add that to the tool. But, you know, all of them, would be great as, as a new tool and, you know, use the latest, um, you know, design and manufacturing techniques to make them even more accurate and, you know, because, uh, and, and they'd be great. But then, of course, they're going to be taking up a hell of a lot of development money that could be, mm -hmm. um, could be directed in another, uh, another area, whether that be 148 scale, whether it be a, you know, a, a new edition, because I mean, certainly mm -hmm. the, the guys have mentioned on there that there's some um, fleet air arm stuff that they'd love to have, and we'd love to have them in there. Um, but of course, it, to do that, we need quite a bit of uh, of development money to be directed in, in that way. And if we retool the Lancaster, I suspect mm. the new Lancaster would be significantly more expensive than the uh, yes. than the existing one would be yeah. from a tooling perspective. So that's going to be a big a big project. And that's it, it might be that if we retooled the Lancaster, um, we couldn't get anything else out in that particular mm. um, year. So yeah. you know, is that what people want? Would they rather have two? brand new um, aircraft types introduced into the range or would they rather have a, a retooled Lancaster? Um, mm -hmm. I know we, we have to answer that question for them and, mm -hmm. um, and, and but it's, it's, it is a question that gets um, discussed within the team without a shadow of a yeah. doubt. That's it. Or, or write in or um, you know, discuss it on forums and whatnot. We know what we're about. We'll be able to pick it up and sort of begin to assess from there as well. Um, right, scrolling down the page. Oh, 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 this is actually the last aviation one. Um, I saved it to the last one because it's from Mr. Mark Stringer. Um, it's, that's it, that's it. Multiple questions on this one. So um, it's got a nice bit of fat for you to chew over um, towards the end of your Christmas dinner, Michael. I think we should do number four first. Number four? Say. Are we ever going to do yeah. this interview? Well, yes, yes, we want to, yes, definitely. We, we definitely want to. Um, we just need to get a date in the diary. So yes, Mark, we definitely want to talk to you um, and your, and your followers. Need, we need to be invited down to Stringer Towers so we can, uh, <laughs> we can go in your little studio and do it properly. There you go. So first one off the bat, um, will the new Spitfire 9 be told to allow multiple different variants around that time, such as the Mark 8, PR9, and I, my Roman numerals fail me there, Michael, help. It shows uh, how terrible 16. I am. 16, yeah, that's right. That's what we would get from it, isn't it? Um, I think the answer on that one at the minute is no, um, as it stands. I mean, stuff can be added. 
There's um, a good reason for that, though, isn't there? Because yes. in the past, when we've um, when you try and squeeze too much into a tooling, it it's not you know we, we, these things are made out of of, of diecast metal, and and, and you, you're you're in that situation where you're trying to keep it away from people thinking of it as a toy and it's a collectible product. Mm. The more um, slides and tooling alternatives you put in there, the nearer you take it towards the, the, the toy thing. And, and at the end of the day, what we wanted with the, with the new uh, Mark 9 is that we wanted it to be the best representation of the 9 in this particular scale. And, um, mm. you know, and, to, and to do that, sometimes you have to limit potential options. And commercially, that, you know, that's a big decision to take because you know, the, the money men will want us to, to, to eke out as much uh, revenue from any particular project that we do. Um, so, you know, we back ourselves with that one, that we think that the, um, the collectors would, would love a, the most accurate representation rather than one that, that can accommodate different marks. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that, that's the sort of... Um, yeah, there, there is like a, there is a risk, isn't there? I mean, we sort of I often bandy about with the development team the, um, the notion, if you're an Only Fools and Horses fan of Trigger's Broom, um, you know, if you sort of end up packing too much stuff in there, it's not the same thing as it started out. So, in effect, sort of, we've we've made the the nine to be as good as it can be, and it's focused purely on that. Now, there is the room for expansion in there with wing types and things like that. Um, you know, there's a reason why the T nines come along at the same time. Um, and again, triggers broom in effect. So it's very focused on that Marcus Spitfire and anything in the future. We would be looking to. Um, you know, I know that bubble top go, um, goes around quite a lot. We want to be doing something like that in the future. So, you know, it's, it's things like that. And that sort of exists, you know, the 14 exists as a tool already. Um, that got triggers broomed. Um, you know, had different wings put into it later on. They've only been used the once. Um, if we did a bubble top, it's probably a brand new tool. So, you know, it's, it's things like that. It's, it's a from scratch job um, with quite a lot of things. So we just basically want to make, if we're sort of focusing on that one, we want to make sure it's as good as it can be. Yeah, but it can turn into a compromise if you if you try and put too much in there. Um, yeah. You know, we, we can see where you're going with that, definitely. But, you know, from experience and from, you know, hard lessons learned, it, it's it's mm. something that we we def definitely wanted to take a, you know, a conscious decision on that. So, yeah, that's it. Um, second one from Mark. Will Corgi also look into producing dioramas such as an airfield hangar setup, desert based, like they have done in the past with the Catalina Corsair and Zero, Corsair and Harrier carrier decks? I mean, we have discussed dioramas again, haven't we? Um, I mean, I think it would look amazing um, with the um, Sunderland. Yeah, um, that the Sunderland is the one that's crying out for a diorama because yeah. it, it completely transforms that model because a Sunderland, you know, um, sort of on the water is a thing of beauty. I mean, it really mm. is, really is nice. And and, and it would um, really breathe new life. I'm, I'm sure people would love that. But again, it's it's down to it's down to logistics it's a down to to who could we get um to mm -hmm. manufacture it and it's cost as well because it would uh, the the box would be bigger the you know obviously you'd have to you'd have to um have the diorama built it's going to significantly increase the cost of the of the model mm -hmm. um and it's difficult to do that because you know as anybody would uh, would tell you if they were a, a modeler themselves that you know uh, weathering and dioramas are really a really sort of personal thing somebody could could produce one that they love and somebody will look at it and think it's it's abhorrent and it's a it's a really difficult one i mean if you think about the the carrier deck for the harriers it was um i mean i don't think that was particularly our finest hour it's i know it's from you know old corgi but mm -hmm. um it, it it was a it was a diorama but you know would, would people say that they couldn't do better i don't know i mean mm -hmm. i've i've certainly asked a few modelers to build us um a, a, a water line diorama for the um for the Sunderland, um, and I think that's really has got some validity. Um, but then it would be a separate issue for for us and the team to go out and, mm -hmm. and actually find a vendor capable of doing that um, at a cost that would make it um, attractive to collectors. Yeah, no, no, it's, um, it's, it's a watch this space. I think I mean it's it's one we we sort of we flirt with it and talk about it quite a bit, don't we? And um, it's something which I, I think, as I say, Sunderland would look amazing. Um, so yeah, it would. something we'd like to revisit. All but, models um, look great on, on a diorama, don't they? There's yeah. no two ways about it. So, um, yeah. Okay, so we've sort of done number four already. So we'll just do number three, which will sort of be Mark's final one. Can you, just for the sake of my Aussie chum Christian, confirm that the Canberra tooling is alive and well, and one day the elusive Aussie Canberra will make an appearance? Now, um, 
If we'd done this video two weeks ago, um, I would have, now I'm not gonna put the frighteners on you, just to clarify immediately, Mark, when I say, if I'd done the vid this video two weeks ago, I would have said, yeah, no, it's fine. Um, I would say that the Canberra tooling is alive and needs a bit of love. That's what I would say at this stage. But that means, obviously, we are looking at it. Um, and you can probably hopefully expect something within the next 12 months. It's very much in our plans um, soon. Um, and you mentioned an Australian one, well, might, it might have been might have been sooner had it not been for the love that was required. But yes. uh, I think I think you might have given a bit of a game away there. So no, no, you, it's you, re Christmas. you really are being Santa, aren't you? It's Christmas. Oh, I mean, I sat here last year when the camera came up, and I sort of said, "Oh yeah, no, no, it's fine." And so it's like it sort of it gets to the stage where it's at the factory in effect, and sort of things are found that have to be sorted. And so those are being sorted. We are doing it um, now. So simply the fact that I've said it's at the factory should say what you want me to hear what you want to hear <laughs> that's all i can say it, it, it suggests that um you know it, it something's might have, happening yeah it might have moved its way a little bit up that list i, I mean yeah. talking of camber as well i mean it's a beautiful tool and it's, and it's an underused tool and it, it is perhaps looking at um at our um, antecedents of models it's um it's the one that's that's advanced to you know to to sort of pre-production stage and then being cancelled so many times, more mm. than any other any other tooling, and it's such a shame because it is a, a really lovely model. Um, yeah, not not but this it, time. It, it, it is a, it is about time that it um, you know it, it made a reappearance. Yeah, no, and and it, it definitely is going to. As I can say that, and my mouse has stopped working. Now here it is. Right now, on the last questions, these are not um, uh, aviation questions, Michael. These are actually um, technically collected the Corgi Model Club, which is sort of the um, the exterior club which um, we work alongside and supply product to um, for models. A um, couple of a couple of questions from Frank Bonilla, um, one of which is sort of easier to answer than the other. Um, me and others are very happy that the Corby Model Club is now going to obtain the license for the 1966 Batmobile reissue. Are they indeed? That's very very interesting indeed. Um, I mean, can we see other variations like red stripes? I mean, you're going to see some stuff with those retro toolings um, as well in the future, um, which is sort of make it a bit more interesting as well. Um, Batmobile can't possibly comment. Um, it won't be um, next year if it happens, um, just to really sort of drive that home. But, you know, obviously it's the second biggest Korg, classic Corgi toy release behind the Aston Martin DB5. So it's very much been on that wish list um, to be produced um, in whatever form we can. So yeah, that's a watch this space really on that. Um, this is a new David for me. There is definitely not water in that glass. What is going on? No. You're, you're giving so much away. It's like, um, it really is Christmas. It's, it's definitely not white spirit. I know, I know I'm know. i sort of sat in the airfix studio. It's not It's not white spirit, so I, I don't know. Um, it's, it's fine. Um, other one from Frank. So you're blaming well, it on the airfix. You're blaming it on the airfix for people know what's for drinking. around in here. You've got no idea. You've got no idea. Absolutely no idea. I mean, I've left the humbrol over there, so I don't want to be touching that as shots or anything. That's a bad idea. But anyway. <laughs> Um, Frank's other question, um, can Corgi make the Speed Racer Mac 5 as it's from the 1960s and does tricks? Now, um, that's an interesting one because um, it ties back to what we said earlier about licensing. Um, in some ways, um, it's quite sewn up with other manufacturers. Uh, oh dear, the cat's moving, Michael. Is it? Oh no. It's about to pounce. It's about to pounce. No, I think, think, no, I think you're right. Um, so yeah, it's tied up with other licenses. Uh, licensors, uh, manufacturers rather, um, and then there would be a license attached to it. I mean, it's not been on, on any list, I have to be honest, Frank. Um, it's a never say never, but um, there are already lots of models out there and it's one of those considerations we'd have to take about whether we enter into a market when the competition is quite robust already. So, yeah, I mean, sort of, I have to say never say never, but um, at the moment, um, not as yet from our point of view. Um, Last question from Simon Libish, and something like this came out last year. Um, an absolute no-brainer, but surprise not decided upon. From the releases to the Corgi Collectors Club, it appears that someone has access to the old box artwork. Why not release a library of reproduction boxes, as buyers will know the artwork and quality will be bang on, excuse me. The inner flap can be marked with an appropriate marker, so they can't be passed off as genuine. Um, it's a really good so, question, that, isn't it? It's a very good question, because, I, I, as I say, the um, reproduction box market is huge. Um, I mean, the thing, from our point of view, is it's like we don't actually have access to the original artwork, um, in all honesty, Simon. Um, we are 
obtaining the original boxes from various places, scanning them and upgrading them. Um, our graphic designer um, says that it is actually her least favourite job of all jobs that she does um, because of the amount of work involved. I mean, the results that she produces from them and the rest of the team produce are like astonishing. I mean, yeah, it is something under consideration. I mean, well, is it under consideration? It's something we could consider, I should say, rather than sort of say that we're thinking about it. It is something which, you know, there, there is the market. At the same time, we are a die-cast manufacturer um, rather than a cardboard manufacturer. The cardboard sort of comes along um, alongside the product at the same time. But, you know, it is something which in the future could definitely be looked at, I'd say, um, if the demand is, is there. Um, but, yeah, it, just to sort of manage some expectation there in the fact that, yeah, that there is quite a lot of work um, and they are produced in concert with um, a model that is going to be produced um, for either the club or for us. Yeah, there, there's a huge commercial uh, question to be answered there. I mean, I mean, yeah. sometimes if you think about sort of to mention the the airfix word again, I mean, they, they um, they're quite happy to have um, aftermarket companies um, produce mm. things that are going to benefit the kits that they produce. And you know, is that a, a similar question with this? Are, are we are we better off letting the, the aftermarket look after these? Because you know, again, if we were having to divert funds towards that, it's going to take money away from uh, future uh, new tooling development. So. Yeah. It, it would it all have to be um you know thrown into the mix i suppose yeah no that's it i mean i think the thing we can sort of sum up from quite a lot of these questions is it's very much watch this space we are listening um as you know as much as we can we sort of we are sort of about on the internet in various places we sort of have quite a wide support group for all our different brands um whether it's researchers um outside help from other places we go to um so it is sort of very much we like to think that we're on it and we sort of are trying to make sure that we're applying proper consideration to the request that the collector wants in particular. Um, it's very much at the forefront of my mind, which is you know hidden underneath this very painful hat, really hurting now. Um, so I can't wait to take this off. But yeah, it's, um, it's very much sort of at the forefront of our minds all the time, every year, every, every month, every week, every day, um, is what we're sort of always looking at. Every second, second, yeah. And, and I know... People sometimes do get frustrated thinking that we, we're not listening and we don't think, but, but when we make decisions, they differ, you know, there, there are sort of business um, aspects that have to be satisfied. Uh, we'd never take the support of, of, of our, our people. I mean, the, the Corgi um, fraternity, so to speak, is fantastic. And we're really grateful for the, for the support. And, and even when you guys are, are asking really quite searching questions that, that, that can be hurtful. I mean, we do take note and we, you know, and they're important to us because it's all about um, progression. It's all about you know getting better all the time. And we 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 don't take this uh, this position that we're in lightly, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that we produce the right models for you guys, and that when you get them, that you're absolutely delighted with them. Um, but you know that support element, we are really grateful for that. It's been a, a good year for us here at Corgi, and, and you guys have a, a big part of that. So we're really grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you for the questions, even though that some of them were a little bit uncomfortable. God bless you. Um, but from from my perspective, you know, I, I would like to thank everybody for the support yeah. and, and you know the blogs that we do, all the all the social media posts. Um, you're really great in, uh, in in helping us achieve what we want to achieve, and we certainly wish you all a very happy yes. Christmas with lots of diecast under your tree. Yep, yep, and a very good New Year when um, we will be along um, in early January to discuss the first um, range of product that will be debuting up until April next year with a couple of pre-orders which are a little later on smattered in there. And um, yeah, sort of hopefully sort of some of these answers have sort of made some of the questioners um, happy as well because it's, sort of, it's what I wanted to set out when we sat down and did this. It's like we've answered every question that came to us basically. Um, yeah. I, I didn't want to skirt around anything. And um, you know, I think sort of, from my point of view, being as sort of transparent, as honest as, you know, things allow um, is the top of my mandate as we go forward. Yeah. But, you know, I think the, the key thing with these is the fact that hopefully, I mean, we, we just, we just like the guys that have sent the questions in. We, we're passionate about this thing. We really, and I, I, I probably, you know, I've got my collection is probably on par with anybody's that's um, that, that sent maybe, maybe not Mark's. I mean, he's, <laughs> I, th I think he's got three houses full of die cast, but, um, but that's another story. And, and um, you know, it, it's, it, it's important to us that, that, that uh, you guys are happy, but to, uh, we try hard every year. Next year's a new year, and um, hopefully, when that range is announced, um, 
Debbie's not given all the secrets away. But... No, I definitely haven't. There's still plenty to come. I mean, so we've not even spoken about what CapEx for Aviation and Vanguards are actually doing. So, you know, that's what you've got to find out in January. I know, that's what I was worried about. Letting yeah. The, the no, 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 it wouldn't let you. We, we'd, we'd sort I've of, done, that, that would become well. a bag over your head. It's fine. There's someone outside your front door, Michael. It's, it's all right. But no, but no. So we, I thought, let, the, let, I thought that, did you see? I looked look. at, yeah, I did, because I thought there's somebody. Make you know, a we usually get um, disturbed when we have these meetings. But... <laughs> there you go. Right. So, yeah, I guess um, you've already said your, your sign off indeed, but I think we'll sort of do a joint one again. So thank you again for sending in your questions. Um, and we should basically wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, and we'll be back in early January with uh, revealing what we'll, we're actually been up to, what's coming um, over the next 12 months and onwards, the best that we can. And um, just hope everyone has a very restful end to 2022 and we will see you properly again in 2023. Yeah, thank you very much indeed for your questions and for your support. And um, we'll see you same time, same place next year for more questions. <laughs> well, maybe not to the hour, but close enough. I can't wait to take this off. Shall I do it? Different hats. Oh, it's yeah, not that bad. Off, it? It's not that bad. It's all right. I can get away with that. Maybe a bit of an aerial, but it's all right. I might pick up some frequencies.